In the last Q&A, Javon and Nate mentioned that B8 rings don't buckle and, ha and have wondered where this idea come from. Maybe you can bring this up. So basically, someone on Audi Zine posted that, this is what they said, rings have been our Achilles heel. Under excessive heat, they grow and the ring gap closes, causing the ring to buckle on itself and scratch the cylinder walls and drop compression. I believe it's related to a lean condition, but others are saying it's related to cylinder pressure. So-and-so was running more boost than any of us for quite some time because he had his feeling figured out. Same for turbo, blah, blah, blah. Um, I mean, yeah, ring gaps are a thing. Um, you know, ring gaps are required and the rings do expand and contract under different thermal loads. Uh, it's generally temperature related, not necessarily uh, you know, cylinder <laughs> pressure related for, for ring gap stuff. I, I still think some person just posted some random thoughts. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, yeah, that's not how we determine if rings. Are I, I think more to our point, what we were discussing or, or trying to get the point across was like, if you go out and it's cold, you're not necessarily going to collapse your rings or, or your ring lands or, or your rings aren't going to, you know, buckle under that one condition. That said, there's, you know, maybe a lot of guys out there running on the very edge of what their vehicles and engines can do. And, you know, maybe it's working fine and they've got enough fuel for X amount of airflow at warmer temperatures and then things get colder and they're outside of where they should be. You know, we don't know without any more data, but it's not something we can globally say, like, you know, don't drive your car like this when it's 30 yeah. degrees. Yeah. And, and my, my my objection personally is I think it's really important to speak accurately about anything that you're speaking about. And so it sounds like there are cars out there with engine failures that have fueling issues. And that's maybe an accurate statement mm -hmm. to then equate that uh, or correlate that to ring buckling. Yeah. <clears throat> Based on the information and the data and our extensive experiences, I would call BS on that. Um, you know, piston ring tolerances are sized to accommodate heat expansion of the piston. And, uh, you know, more likely what is happening is that there is detonation, yeah, which, is, which is damaging the upper ring land, which is the, the top of the piston. That, that there, there's a part of the piston in the combustion chamber that's very susceptible to heat, and it starts melting first. So imagine you take a candy bar and you lay it in a, in a hot pan. The edges are going to start melting first, right? Because there's more thermal mass on the center of the chocolate bar than there is on the edges. So the, the chocolate on the edges just gets pounded by the heat and that's what happens to the piston and so the piston is round and there's heat being applied to it from the combustion process and then the rings are on the sides of the piston and the, the issue that that is created is the upper ring land <coughs> creates the small part of the piston that sticks out which is called the upper ring and that uh, is exposed to, to a lot of heat from combustion and it doesn't have a lot of thermal mass because it's kind of this little peninsula out on its own. The center of the piston can deal with a lot more heat or, or the edges or where the, where the, the mass of the piston is. So once the, <clears throat> the upper ring land starts melting, immediately what happens? Well, the, the ring is no longer supported and it starts contacting the cylinder. Yeah, or the, what happens is that ring will get basically seized in that, you know, yeah. that, that ring land, the, the ring gap, you know, Closed down and aluminum. basically is pinching the ring a little bit, yeah. and that'll start scoring things very quickly. M melted aluminum prevents the ring from functioning, and it starts scratching the cylinder walls. Someone is probably interpreting this as, um, you know, the the ring land see the the ring seizing. And again, I think this is a misinformed conclusion, um, but we know for sure that engines fail all the time from detonation for a myriad of other by reasons. overheating the upper piston ring lands. Uh, and causing the, 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 the piston to melt. Another thing that happens is when the upper ring land starts melting, molten aluminum is deposited on the cylinder wall. And then that takes out the ring, you know? So there's a, there's a lot of modes of failure here. Um, but I would, I would there, there's for the piston rings to, to receive so much heat that they would seize, it, other things are going to start melting way before. You're probably going to blow your head gasket. You might melt your exhaust valves. There's going to be a lot of things right. that, that fail before that because the piston rings and the gaps are sized to accommodate the full range of thermal. And and they're, they're generally, I mean, they are the same across all of your six cylinders. So if it's a chronic issue like that, 
uh, it's going to almost always represent across all of the cylinders in the same way. So if you if you're seeing one that goes out or there's you know there's there's a single cylinder that looks way worse than others, it's generally a you know, fueling distribution problem, a uh, you know intake temperature or coolant you know supercharger core is leaking, your intercooler core is leaking, or you know there's there's some other factor that's that's assisted in, in compromising that uh, that cylinder. So so whoever wrote post number nine says that rings are the Achilles heel, but I don't think he's right. I think fueling is, sounds like based on what he said, fueling and tuning are the Achilles heel. Yeah, the, the ring is just kind of like the last fuse that goes yeah. out in the, in the situation and, and takes, you know, the, the cylinder wall and the motor down with yeah. it. But, you know, whoever, whoever's asking this question, you know, you, you just, you just have to be careful. You can't just take what some random person says on the internet yeah. as, as a fact. And, and, you know, we've said over and over and over again, too, it's like, you know, you need to be, throwing the biggest pulley that's on the market on your motor and just ripping around on it all day. Which people are doing. Which a lot of people do. A lot of people do it. Um, you really got to pay attention to you know where your limits are. Um, you know, we sell a 179 and a 190 millimeter pulley, and that's, you know, what we feel comfortable for, for ratios uh, for, you know, an engineered long-term solution. We're going to be offering a bigger one, but generally that's going to be intended for just a single pulley application. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't. So it's all about, it's not for you know, it's the pulley ratios. Uh, so you really got to you know pay attention to where your motor is. We we don't have control about what pulley ratios and pulleys you're putting on your your motor. Uh, so yeah, that, that comes yeah. You know, that's just kind of part of the territory. Is if you're going to heavily mod your vehicle, you got to pay attention mm -hmm. to what you're doing and what the motor's doing. A lot of these guys seem to forget that a metal has a constrained amount of expansion. It can't just continue to expand and expand and expand after more heat. It will just melt at some point. Uh, so the common well, there's a melt, there's a melting point. And the then, expansion's not the problem; yeah. it's the melt. And, 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 and metal has a melting. Point. The, 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 with this, there's a you know obviously a kernel of truth is rings have gaps. Those gaps are designed to be there. There's a, there's an amount of expansion and, and, and closing of that gap that happens under different thermal loads. Um, to say that that thermal load is so much higher when it's a you know super low DA and and you're putting a bunch more uh, you know air into the motor that would be tough uh to to quantify uh, yeah i mean I, I think i asked for some evidence yeah in the last live chat and the evidence was provided and it was just some guy on the internet talking out of his butt no offense to whoever said this but i think you're talking out of your butt um <laughs> i mean it's, it's just tough with such little data I, yeah. you know you, you know people say well it's always this cylinder it's always this it's like well maybe that cylinder is the the you know last in line for the fuel yeah. delivery the, the, you know, however the, the fuel distribution is going but it may indicate that it's, it's a it's a yeah fuel supply problem not a ring or a piston problem right. now, now whoever posted this can can supply uh, a post-mortem analysis that uh, clearly dictates the root cause as the piston rings seizing right. then i don't think you'll be talking out of your butt but what you wrote is talking out of your butt so you know I, I would i would i would challenge anyone to, to provide more evidence the person that sent in this question uh pulled it from an audi scene thread about that link and that's his yeah yeah and that's what i'm talking about yeah. whoever, whoever posted that on audi z right is just you know it's people talk out of their butt all the time yeah it's anecdotal uh but it's not even i mean it's this the example is anecdotal but the analysis is just a, a wild assumption yeah, and assumptive then, on, on and the logical conclusion if you're just going to make an assumption would be that it's the upper ring line melting, which is literally how all these engines fail when they run lean and there's detonation. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I've ever seen a OEM piston ring seize like is being discussed. I've seen aftermarket pistons that were improperly gapped seize like this. And that's a, that's a very common thing for say like a J or a Wisco piston where uh, the, the proper ring gap is not, uh, is, is not uh, toleranced that doesn't take into the expansion ratio for that alloy of that piston. But the, the factory is very good at this. And you know, unless you overpower the engine, these engines are really tough and reliable. They last a long time. Factory engines are great, which is pretty much why we stopped supporting, you know, engine builds like this. It's, it's yeah. I mean, the, the, the thousands and millions of engines and rings and pistons that the factories, the OEMs are putting together that rely on good work are, are, you know, it's, it's hard to do better yeah. in a lot of these cases, unless you're so far outside, like to Javad's point, so far outside of the operating range that it can, that you know, the stock piston can deal with, um, then, you know, 
you will have to go to an aftermarket solution. But yeah, 